Hey, Rock. Yeah, DJ? Let me tell you about the time that my Shadowrun campaign nearly fell apart due to one person's dragon dildo addiction. I hate myself. Oh, I hate myself. I hate myself. Oh, I hate myself. Okay, so this one, I heard it once long ago. It's going to be me, DJ, his brother Deadeye, and our mutual friend Gans. Yep. Yeah, our, so our I'll, be, I'll be telling the story, this, this shit. Uh, I've written it up on a certain forum once dedicated to uh, traditional gaming. And it's that's fortunate. Really we, don't have to, we don't have to be, <laughs> okay, have to be come coy on. about it's this. It's our like... Mongolian cheese farming forums. <laughs> yeah, our, sure. our, yeah. our Japanese porn discussion roundtable for discerning adults. Holy shit, I would join that. <laughs> but... Basically, Shadowrun is a tabletop role-playing game. It's like, a, basically just think D&D, but cyberpunk. So, that doesn't really matter. What matters is that the group of people that I play with, I met via a community college. When, when I went there, you know, there's a common room, people were playing games and stuff, and I met this dude, Bob. Now, Bob is hilarious to hang out with, because he is, he is on the autism spectrum, and he does not give a fuck <laughs> about basically anything this dude openly states that he hangs out with awful people because he thinks it's funny usually he's correct yeah it, it is hilarious he's the sort of dude who will call you up at like two in the morning to tell you about some ridiculous random bullshit and it's never not entertaining so <laughs> anyway he introduced me to a group of his friends and some other people that I knew through college, we decided to start up a role-playing game group. Because I wanted to run Shadowrun, and other people wanted to play the game. So we had uh, five players, I believe. Me and five players. Uh, we have Bob, and a decent number of them are actually on the autism spectrum. It's not just me being an <laughs> asshole by pointing that out. I mean, I am, but it's not just me being an asshole. It, it'll help explain how some of this complete breakdown in communication could occur. But the group was Bob, who, you know, is awesome, hilarious to hang out with, just walking memes. It's great. Uh, John, also on the on the spectrum, super quiet dude, knows all the rules front and back, doesn't really talk much at all, but whenever he opens his mouth, it's fucking gold. Greg, who is a male nurse, who is way the fuck too normal to be hanging out with any of these dudes. I genuinely have no idea where he came from or why he hung out with any of us. See, but... that's something that's happened to me, too. I've noticed a lot of male nurses, like, I go to the comic shop where I got fucking arrested and, like, I'll play <laughs> magic with uh, uh, now, hold who on. come in, like, his scrubs. And treat yeah, I don't me like got... a scrub. You see, I thought he was a super normal dude, but apparently he's the super sort of dude who's like, hey, who wants to go look up videos on Live Leak? No. And I'm like, I okay. Tell you. Are we just Why? going to no sell getting arrested in a comic shop? Or. Hey, that was a previous. Story. Gans, that was a previous story. Please fucking listen to my podcast. Uh, then we had. Uh, <laughs> the other player oh, shit. is. One of the other dudes. Okay. Other dude, Mike. Uh. This guy, super energetic, great role player, always plays female characters for some reason. We let it slide. Shouldn't you, let it... You know, you know what reason he's doing it. Dude, I, I, I try to not. <laughs> and then uh, we have Craig, a metalhead, huge metalhead, also on the autism spectrum. Best fucking dude ever. Fucking love this dude. Go on to metal shows with him. It's awesome. <laughs> the fucking best. And then we have Kenny, which is his real name, because fuck this dude. We, we kicked him out of the group shortly after this for entirely unrelated reasons, but fuck you, Kenny. If you're listening to this, Kenny, fuck you. And if you Kenny notice, is listening... Kenny is not on the spectrum. No, yeah, he isn't, but somehow the most autistic member of the group, despite not being autistic. <laughs> so, getting to the meat of the story... A real meat and potatoes here. So, the game's been going great for a while, right? We've been playing, we've been having a great old time. And then, out of the fucking blue, on the Facebook group that we had for the game, I see Bob post a thing 
that's just like I don't want to play the, I don't want to play Shatter anymore, and I don't want to see John anymore. Nobody will tell me what happens, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Complete silence. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Is the game canceled? Are we showing up? Apparently, you know, some people are told me like, no, 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 we're still going over to Bob's place to, you know, like to hang out and maybe play because we played at his place. And I get there, yeah. and I'm just, I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? Why, why are you pissed at him? What the hell happened? And nobody will tell me. He won't tell me shit. You're just like, man, that dude's fucking dead to me. And I'd never seen him be this serious. Like he was dead set. Like fuck this dude. <laughs> I'm fucking pissed at John. Like he is so pissed. But I get pulled aside. I think by I think by Greg, and he tells me that what happened was a mutual friend of theirs. John had commissioned artwork from her, and what he told me was that this this girl owed Bob like three hundred dollars for some shit that she just never paid him back for. So I'm like, man, fuck that bitch. You know, <laughs> like like why the fuck can't she? So what? Like, you know, John's giving her money. Shouldn't she be able to pay him back? He's like, no, she hasn't paid him back for like a year. Like, well, what the fuck did she spend all her money on? And straight faced dragon dildos. At this point, just just straight face. Wait, what? It's like, yeah, just tons of them. Like, how many are we talking here? He tells me, I think she has like a hundred. Oh, and they ain't cheap. You do the math here. You do the math here on these things. I did some quick mental math, and. Those things cost between like a hundred and a hundred and fifty dollars. Don't ask me how I fucking know this, but I know this. <laughs> Do you ever just like get to the point in your life where you realize that you're doing mental math to determine the total value of a large sum of dragon dildos? Just like, a horde. <laughs> like, yeah, this is what my life is right now. Yeah, that's what I was doing, and I came out to about, on average, about twelve thousand dollars worth. Of <laughs> twelve, twelve thousand. Well thousand dollars worth that's if you more have a than like the fucking... av- price of them is a hundred and twenty dollars because that's about the average price twelve grand it's not the... even counting like the fake dragon cum no yeah that shit's extra <laughs> that's the extra spicy sauce that's the extra the secret sauce <laughs> but the thing is is that the reason that bob is pissed is because they, they had all agreed as a group, like, as friends. Bob was trying to get people to not give her money, because she still lives at her parents' house, by the way. She has a hundred dildos in her parents' home. A hundred? Like, you just have to imagine, where the fuck does she get them sent? Because if they just show up at the house, you have to imagine being her then, just being like, yep, that's another one. <laughs> and then just every day, you just start crossing off, like... Just shit on the wall. It's like number of dildos until I just fucking end it. <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, you failed as a parent if your daughter is still living at home and has twelve grand in fake lizard fucking dicks. <laughs> just, just hoard it up in her room. I'm assuming she sleeps on them like an actual dragon with gold. <laughs> like she's just like smog on top of these fucking. Draconic dongs just sleep in there. <laughs> Take so a nap on the wyvern wings. Duck or a leg or some shit. <laughs> I really, I really don't need these mental images you're giving me right now. Right? Like this bitch has literally shoved twelve grand straight up her ass. <laughs> This is twelve thousand dollars that she'd be using to pay bills, move out of her parents' house. She is apparently successful enough at producing artwork for people who commission it to be able to purchase this many dildos. That's a sentence no one has ever said before. Exactly. So what Bob was trying to do was get people to stop giving her money until she got her shit together and stopped purchasing dildos. Literally trying to set up an intervention for someone who is addicted to to dragon dicks. <laughs> and it's not just it's not just regular dildos either. It has to be dragon ones. Like it, it has to be fantasy dogs. See, I'm imagining like Christmas morning, she goes over to grandma's house and grandma, you know, just, you know, kind innocent grandma and you know just gets her a normal dildo and she has to pretend to be excited about it. <laughs> And the oh, other thing is, like, these things, from what I've seen from the unboxing video that she's done, oh, oh, God. You know, I, these things are colossal, right? Oof. Like, 
fucking colossal. The phrase hot dog down a hallway comes to mind. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, do they at least come in discreet packaging? I, I have no idea. That's what I want to know. Like, there's no way in hell that she got a hundred of those into her parents' house without them knowing. There's, there's only no... one way to find out. Check out my Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon slash DSP Gaming. Check it out. Yeah. So, John had broken this agreement to not purchase things, though, by purchasing artwork from her. For way too much money, from what I've heard. She overcharges like a motherfucker, from what I've heard. So, he's pissed, right? Just mm-hmm. fucking pissed. Reasonably. Yeah, because honestly, you have a, like, you have a friend who is addicted to dildos in the same way that an alcoholic is addicted to booze. I'm pretty sure at this point, if she stopped purchasing dragon dildos, she would go into withdrawal. <laughs> she would start having fits. Fits over dicks. What, what got me, though, was that, you know, this was being explained to me, and then Bob knew that the cat was out of the bag, and he told me, that you know, like he was pissed at her and pissed at him because John was being a dildo enabler. <laughs> thing that was said, and I'm looking at them, and I'm realizing that my Shadowrun game is going to fall apart due to two grown autistic men having a disagreement about how to treat a mutual friend's dragon dildo addiction. Oh. I planned, like, I put work into this game. I'm like, oh, all right, this is the story, and everybody's going to have a great old time. And I was expecting the game to fall apart. You know, like, somebody moves away, somebody dies. I don't know. Like, a character <laughs> somebody dies. Somebody dies. One of the two. And Someone then, you know, the game. Inside. Or, you know, somebody gets a new job. I didn't think it would happen due to two grown autistic men having an argument about dragon dildos. That was the last thing on my list. No one expects dragon dildos. So, I mean, he was like, did oh, anyone I really pen him for a dildo enabler, though? Can you really, like, t- sense a dildo enabler persona in somebody? Yeah, this is the question, but we also have legitimate evidence in the form of a YouTube video of her shoving copious amounts of dragon dildos into her parents' dishwasher. That's the best way uh, that sentence could have ended. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> piece of shit. You that was a fun ride. Shoving, <laughs> shoving copious and amounts of dragon just... dildos into her parents' dishwasher. You bet your <laughs> sweet then... ass that's going to be the cover art of this episode. And then, yo, the bubbles go fucking everywhere, and she says, like, okay, we learned our lesson here. Don't put your dildos in the dishwasher. No, that isn't the lesson we've learned here. Nobody <laughs> learned the lesson here. And here's the thing. I have it on good authority. I wish I didn't. I have it on good authority that those don't go anywhere near hoo-ha. Those go just exclusively up her ass. Oh, <laughs> come on, man. Man. <laughs> why, why, are you I, doing that? why are you doing that to us, man? I was given this information. Now you have to suffer, too. <laughs> Many so, Bothans die to bring us this information. So... <laughs> was an air of tension in the room while I was being told this shit. And I was speechless. I was just, well, what the fuck? So, games canceled? I don't know. So, what happened was we just chilled at Bob's house that day and just, like, played video games and shit. And then, like, two days later on Facebook, he's just like, okay, everything's fine. He just posts on Facebook that everything's fine. And then we get, we show up next week, and I'm just ready for questions. Like, <laughs> What the fuck happened here? You have a dossier full of inquiries. Apparently, they they had just they had just worked it out via talking to each other, because you know I had, I made some posts on Facebook like you, you figure this shit out, but apparently they just figured it out very quickly, and I have no idea what they said to each other to to sort this out. But the mental image of these two dudes having a serious discussion regarding thousand dollars of dragon dildos and. Like, can I be held responsible for enabling them? Like, in the same way that you might have, like, a friend who's addicted to crack, and you give them money, and you know that they're going to spend it on crack. Apparently, they worked this out, and John, he didn't feel bad about it. Like, the, the weird thing, though, is that they didn't even act like anything was weird. They just showed up, and it's like, all right, let's go. Uh-huh, yeah, we're fine. This is fine. Nothing... <laughs> weird has happened in the last couple of weeks. Really, 
the the craziest thing about the whole about the whole story though is that we managed to actually finish a campaign of a tabletop role playing game. Like that happened afterwards. That never fucking happens. Anybody who's ever run a game knows that that never fucking happens. No That's one has really ever finished evil. a game. Nobody has ever finished a fucking campaign of, of D&D or Shadowrun. Never. And that's really the most unbelievable thing. Like, $12,000 worth of dragon dildos being shoved up some some fucking person's ass. Just, that that's I mean, reasonable. There's yeah. video proof of that. There's no video proof of someone ever finishing a campaign. Of her using them. But, thankfully. But, I really wish I'd used a different word there. But, <laughs> but, yeah. but, but. The thing I have good authority on is that I asked about the situation about a year and a half later or so, and you asked Why? for an update. Because I was curious, like morbidly curious. Apparently, what happened is she now doesn't own as many dragon dildos. I'm like, did she throw them away? <laughs> no. They were sold. You ah! were it was purchased second hand. There is a pair of market. And my first question was, wait, do they sell for more or less use? Oh. <laughs> Man, you've got to believe it's more. What was the answer? I need to know. The answer is less. Oh, yeah. how unfortunate. Because apparently Thank if you God. sterilize them via boiling them or some shit, they become sterile. And apparently she has moved out of her parents' house. And what I learned is that John, the same dude, he stored boxes full <laughs> of these dildos at his house while she was moving for like several days jesus like the, uh, they weren't they weren't have sterile we, have, in those boxes they got, no they, they were we, <sighs> have we found someone he said worse? if they weren't he wouldn't have agreed to hold them <laughs> not have like we found s- someone worse than anthony birch yes is but, it possible <laughs> has science proven it so what this means, though, is that she has sold them. People have purchased these. And this got me thinking, there is a second-hand market for dildos. If there's a second-hand market, then would degenerates... Because there's really no other way to say it. <laughs> degenerate subhumans. Who, no, all degenerates who is of good rapport... Who is of good moral standing purchases dragon dildos. Let, let's be real. <laughs> Would there be, perhaps, a Netflix-like service for dragon dildos? Rentals. Net dicks. Netflix for dicks. This is <sighs> what I was thinking about. And then I immediately, upon thinking about that, immediately hit up Bob on Facebook. It's like, this is your fucking fault. <laughs> Thank, this is your fault. For making me have to think about this sort of thing. You directly led to me thinking about the logistics of Dragon Dildo resale. <laughs> because that was the thing that bothered me. I'm like, how how did she manage? Because he apparently sold like 90 of them. And what? I'm thinking, it is taking 90? Me... Yeah. Like, that means that these things are relatively liquid. How many buyers? Please, please don't use that word. <laughs> they sell relatively quickly then. So the question is, how hard is it to find a buyer for a used dragon dildo? No, 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 no. The real question is here is, is that 90 sold? Right, 90 sold. Cool, great. Well, That's a lot of dildos. How many different people bought them? Ooh, Was that's... it just like one guy? Or is it like, like a bunch? Just one really? guy who wanted a dragon dildo, but he wanted a little bit of English on it. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> just a little bit. What I, little what bit I want to is, so all of these dildos are sold by one company, right? This is the one company. They have the cor- market cornered on dragon dicks. And what is this? I don't think what that are, counts. Don't, 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 say their name. The don't say their name because they haven't paid me. I want to get sued. But they have the market cornered on this shit. And the thing is, is that there are not a hundred different varieties of these dildos. She had repeats. Gee, are you sure? Why would you well, have re- the same one in slightly different size? So the question is, is that like, does she, did she, was she just going through the list to find the perfect one, or did she have like, did she have them set up like old people have pills, like in those in those like labeled <laughs> in like Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Like, did she have a system? 
Like, does she have just like a wall of them? It's like whichever one strikes your fancy, or is there an organization? <laughs> it's like a public library. You just browse the shelves. Exactly. Like, and you have to wonder, like, if you already have one in a larger size, did she get them in a smaller size, or does she only go up? One has to imagine it's a, it's it's a progression, like where eventually. Yeah. Different, you, you no because you start small and then eventually it's just not going to be it's just not going to be enough you know you, you can't, you can't out. go back like she must have started with one series maybe, maybe it's she a must have started thing. with the with the fucking uh, I don't know the Doberman series which oh, personally, God. I'm, personally I'm uh, a fan of the no. Doberman Mark II but you know <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's an actual one but like. She would have had to be like, okay, I'm going to get a small, medium, a grande. So she would have had to buy multiple small ones in the future. Right. So that That's, that, that no. theory, that game theory, doesn't exactly work. Right. So she must have purchased repeats, but just like in a different color. Because Tuesday is red dildo days, and you can't use a green one on that day. But I'm quite fond of this green one, so I need to get this one in red. Is what I can only imagine happen. Does color play an important factor here? See, I'm I'm picturing in my mind her stepping into, like, a walk-in closet and, like, spinning around as the camera pans up with, like, shopping music, like, end of a fucking montage of just dildos sticking out of the wall. Like, like she's getting thrown in the (laughs) chokey. Just tons. Like, if somebody had... If somebody has a hundred of pretty much anything, like, that's a lot. Right, like you have a hundred board games. Like, wow, you really enjoy board games. You have a hundred different types of craft beer in your cabinet. That's a lot. Maybe you should have fewer. You have a hundred dildos, though. Like, once you get into the double digits, I think you've <laughs> the crossed D-D a D of D's. Like, you've crossed a very, very, very obvious threshold of you have too many. Yes, of them. there was lots of thresholds being crossed. Who <laughs> baby? Multiple times. Ah. <laughs> uh. the thing was that this was this person this fucking degenerate with their dragon dildos was nearly the cause of hours upon hours of hard work of me you know planning out of planning out sessions coming up with story for these dudes just going down the fucking drain just due to the fact that she could not apparently stop purchasing dragon dildos and i just i really just want to know what her dad thinks because he has to know you have to fucking know well At okay here's point. the thing what would any of our dads think we are sitting here on a podcast d- simply discussing this i feel like, like just puts us out of the realm of parental love like if my dad heard this and was like son you're dead to me i'd be like, okay that is, that's fair. That's fair. You know, that's I'm going to challenge you on that one, Pops. <laughs> Surprisingly, though, really, is that two grown autistic men were arguing about dragon dildos, and Kenny is still the most autistic dude in the whole fucking group. Fuck that guy. Was Kenny Fuck the Ken- one with the rats? Yes. So, okay, main story over, side story, on Ode to Fucking Kenny. <laughs> Before we go any further, I need you to describe Bob's character again. Oh, oh yeah, characters. So in Shadowrun, Shadowrun is a cyberpunk fantasy game. So, you know, think like fucking, uh, basically Blade Runner with elves. (laughs) I mean, yeah. Bob played a shaman, an elf shaman, who was a huge piece of shit. So... Yeah, to explain why we fucking hate Kenny, Bob and Greg were both playing street shamans. 420, cyber blaze it all day. <laughs> Craig, being a metalhead, was playing a dwarf hacker slash rigger who, like, make machines and shit, like, drive into cars. He's just... It, it's basically exactly him. <laughs> Mike was playing a human physical adept, which is basically just a monk. Hyper addicted on the combat drug kamikaze, which is never a good thing. <laughs> it's just not a good. It's not a good look. And severely, the character was severely addicted to it too, to the point where if they didn't take it, they could die. 
Uh, John was on an orc street samurai, which is basically just, you know, shooty McGun guy. He, he was built like a tank with cyber arms and shit. He had literal rockets on his feet and was basically <laughs> a fucking blender with legs. He just had swords and just ran around zapping everything. And then fucking Kenny was playing an orc infiltrator, you know, stealth guy, you know, decked out with all to the nines with sneaking gear and a super fucking edgy backstory. Just, just the edgiest. He was Doesn't the reaper he... of Shadowrun. Basically. So, you know, the party, the party had been doing some crazy shit. You know, they had, they, they had, uh, gone into a, a fucking metal concert that had a bunch of trolls and orcs hopped up on a bunch of combat drugs, which Bob, proceeded to immediately cast ice sheet on the floor of all of them, <laughs> turning it into a skating rink. This went as badly as it sounds. You know, they <laughs> stole some highly classified documents for people. Oh, and the basic premise for Shadowrun is that your team is deniable assets for huge multinational corporations that run the world. So you do like you do wet work for 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 pay. Like yeah. you're you're swarthy in unscrupulous mercenaries. So the main thing that they were doing is that they had gotten this this tip. They were getting paid to get a disc, a CD, an album from a dead rocker. Like, you know, Kurt Cobain's last album, basically. Right? They were going to be paid a lot for it. Right? They were going to be paid a lot for it. And just keep that in mind. So they're in the dwarf's van running from some from some street gangers, because that's just a thing that happens often. They're street racing against them in some combat street racing. Bob Bob Shaman decides to, you know, chuck a fireball at a at a at a fucking dumpster, set it on fire and then telekinesis it in front of somebody's car. Wow, that's awesome. Super great and wacky. And I'm like, oh man, you throw the fireball at that trash can and some, some devil rats, you know, some mutated rats pop out and they're on fire and they're all over the place. Wow. Wacky fun times. No, <laughs> that, that would be Kenny. <laughs> you like, no, no, they aren't. They aren't on fire. I'm like what the fuck? <laughs> I'm just sitting there. What, what, what the fuck? Cause he is screaming and he just rips out the book, starts flipping pages like a madman points at the rats. And it's like, they don't have fur. They can't be on fire. Retcon, they aren't on fire. Who's up next? What the fuck? Okay, first of all, that's the, the most autistic you do not I've need heard. hair to be on fire. You see, this um, is... For a second of all, it's well, fucking magic? magic. He set them on fire with magic. And then he, he keeps going on about this for a while, and I'm like, I'm just, fuck you. They're on fire, fuck off. <laughs> Then after that session, though, he just posts on Facebook the, the Devil Rat stat block and nothing else. He vague blogged you. <laughs> he vague blogged. And I'm just like, this autistic motherfucker. Then, the, I believe it was the next session, before the game, we were all at Bob's place, having a good old time. He was drinking some water. Somebody bumps into him, right? In, like, maybe causing him to, to spill a little bit on, like, his nose. Nothing major at all. The thing that a sane person would just go... Oh, oh shit, man, you bumped into me. And so he'd go, oh man, sorry about that. What he does is he holds the glass at arm's length, fully extended. I'm looking at him like, oh, oh don't do it. <laughs> Boy, he about to do and he it. he just tips it. He just tips the thing. Pours the entire glass onto the floor. Like, like that was a reasonable thing to do. <laughs> like, that, that's yeah. not a reasonable thing to do. Bob was for some, somehow not, like, cool with that. I don't know all of these dudes that well. Like, I don't know how well they all know each other. For all I know, fucking Kenny is, like, everybody's oldest friend, and they would feel awful about kicking him out of the group, because I'm like, fuck this dude. What the hell? Like, what the fuck? But I didn't have anything concrete enough to kick him out of the group for yet. Yet. He just spurred out once. He spurred... No, he spurred out a lot. Like... <laughs> He's, he's the sort of motherfucker that would post, like, 13 paragraph-long responses to shit that nobody said on Facebook. Oh, God, he's one of those people. He's one of those dudes. I'm looking for an excuse to, like, 
Like, there's no way anybody can deny this dude needs to go. So further on into the campaign, they've gotten the disc. They've gotten that music CD. And, you know, the dude's into some crazy, like, you know, the, there's like a hidden track on the thing that shows the dead rocker dude doing some crazy voodoo shit. You know, like some vampire voodoo shit. Like, he was into some dark magic and shit. So it's like, maybe he's not dead. And these these other presumed dead rockers that the dudes have been fighting against, they were showing up that want the disc, have also been doing some crazy voodoo shit. Like, you know, they've been summoning zombies, they've been, like, draining people's life force and shit. They're being spooky. <laughs> so, they get an offer after they get the disc. They get a call from those guys, like, hey, we need to talk. And then they go because, you know, they've got, they had some, some dirt on them or some shit. Like, I can't remember, but they were basically had to at least go to talk. And what those guys do is, hey, we're spooky as shit. We're fucking spooky. Like, look at this shit. We're so spooky. Spooky and evil. <laughs> they sound pretty scary. They're, they're, they're super scary, dude. <laughs> they were spooky. Spook. But they're like, hey, we want you to sell that disc to us for twice what you were going to sell it to the other guy for. This is obviously an awful deal to anyone who isn't retarded. Yes, uh-huh, uh-huh, I'm going to I'm going to betray the dude who hired me for a bit extra money and work with some comically evil dudes. So everybody's like, nah, not going to take that trade. Everybody except for fucking Kenny. You see, all of these rock star, old dead rock star dudes were orcs, and his character was an orc. And since he was a fucking sheltered white kid, he's like, they're the same skin color as my character. That means he automatically likes them. That That's actually the fucking answer that he gave me. Is like, he feels like, you know, I feel like he would like orcs a lot. <laughs> you're, you're not... Okay, sure. And so, he gets started preparing for how he's going to backstab the rest of the party. Oh, Jesus Christ. Because his plan is to copy, is to get a copy of the disc and sell it to those guys. Right? And I let this happen just because one, I thought it would be funny, which it was, and two, I wanted to get him kicked out of the group. I'm like, okay, this, this is happening. So he manages to get it done because the hacker was a fucking idiot and he just left the disc out with no protections, while he was hammered. Eh. And so a couple of stealth rolls, and he, he gets that shit done. And everyone else so, just has to watch while this is going on, because in character, they don't have any reason to, you know, suspect in, him. In their, and out of character, they had no idea this was happening. So oh, they out go, of character they, as well. Yeah, they go to sell the disc. They go to sell the disc to their employer, and they get there, and he's pissed. He is fucking pissed at them. He's like, why the fuck is this shit leaked all over the internet? And they're just, wait, what the fuck? And Kenny, in real life, has the biggest shit-eating grin ever. They figured out what happened very quickly, out of character. In character, it takes a little bit for them to be like, wait a second. <laughs> this dude could not be worse at hiding how fucking self-satisfied he was, right? In character, they figure it out eventually. They're like, oh, you motherfucker, you backstabbed us. And he tries to do the fucking ninja smokescreen thing. Like, throw down one of the smokescreens and disappear. Yeah, no, he just get, he throws down the smokescreen and somebody else is like, I just fucking shoot him in the head. And a couple of rolls later, done. <laughs> and he starts bitching. He's like, I can't believe you guys killed my character. It's just what they would have done. I can't believe you killed my character. It's what my character would have done. It's just what he would have done, guys. You're all ganging up on me. It's bullshit. I'm like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> then, after that, he made another character, and I still wasn't, like, 100% on kicking him out, because I, I wanted the game to finish. So we finished the game, and when the next game was about to start, I'm like, okay, guys, we need to kick this dude the fuck out of the group. And we did so. It was fairly uneventful actually kicking him out. But what happens is we all agreed this dude is insane. This dude is crazy. Like other examples of him being fucking insane. Uh, one time when Burger King was doing the, the 10 chicken nuggets for a dollar fifty thing. Y yes, this is relevant. <laughs> him and Bob decided to buy, always relevant. Of, just to buy a shit ton of them because they thought it would be funny. And so he orders, like, 130 chicken nuggets through the drive-thru. 
Oh, what a piece of shit. Right? So that's already a douchebag thing, and he gets a mellow yellow to drink. <laughs> then he, we're waiting on the nuggets because there's way too many being ordered. They can't just give it to us through the drive-thru. And I'm having no part of this. I'm, an, I'm a passive observer. <laughs> I do not consent. But then he takes a sip of mellow yellow and goes, Blah! Yeah, I forgot I hate Mellow Yellow, and he goes inside. He goes inside with the drink, presumably to say, I didn't like it, can I get a different one? But what you have to realize is he already ordered 130 chicken nuggets. He has already fucking ruined their day. We're just like, <laughs> dude, just take that shit. It's not that big of a deal. Please don't inconvenience them further. And apparently, from what I saw through the window, they didn't want to change it out for him for, at, at first. But he was bit, like, you could tell that he was getting upset. Over his fucking dollar twenty soda. Yeah, that he ordered. They didn't even fuck it up. <laughs> they didn't even fuck it up it's not like they gave him mellow yellow and he didn't want it he wanted mellow yellow he just forgot that he didn't like it you know he really he really goes against the message of mellow yellow i'm not really surprised he's not a big fan of it right these are some well, funny soda jokes dead eye gods did you hear that i didn't hear you laughing i mean i i, I, I heard it it's not uh, it's not making me laugh but Got it. Mike went to a shitty anime convention and commissioned an artist to draw his and Craig's characters, and it was pretty cool. It was a it was a nice little picture. And then fucking Kenny writes out ten paragraphs about why it's the shittiest art he's ever seen. <laughs> and the dude posted in the Facebook group like like man, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm like, what the fuck? Why would you shit on somebody's happiness like that? Like somebody's like, hey, I like this thing, and you just go, no, <laughs> fuck you. Like, he didn't have to. He could have just said in private, like, I don't think the picture is very good. Like, to somebody else. But no, he posted publicly, like, hey, fuck you for thinking that this thing that you're happy with is good. And his reasons were insane, by the way. They were just nonsensical. Well, obviously, he's, you know, a really professional artist. He knows what he's talking about. Oh, absolutely. About. Uh, most of them were to do with Craig's character. The dwarf had an eye patch. And the other character was on the blind side of the eye patch, and he was like, "This is ridiculous. Nobody with an eye patch would ever be comfortable with somebody standing on their blind side, ever." <laughs> that was his reasoning. He's got more than a touch of the tism. No, he wasn't autistic. He's not on the spectrum. Oh that's God, the that's thing. right. He's playing games with people who are actually on the autism spectrum. So, like, when I'm driving Craig home afterwards, like, Maybe man, why is this such a fucking autist? Like. People with actual autism are saying, man, this dude is a fucking autist. <laughs> Maybe he self-identifies as autistic. It's his He's head kid. He's tism we, we, we literally fucking old yellered this kid, by the way. <laughs> we took him out. You for, took him out back and you shot cream. him in the back of the head? So we all went out for ice cream and we let him get the ice cream. <laughs> let him finish the like ice cream. Like a six-year-old kid. <laughs> right? We let, let him finish, finish the ice cream. <laughs> he just, we didn't want the ice cream to be ruined. <laughs> like, like, hey, listen, Kenny, Kenny. Kenny, Daddy's not going to be around for a while. Um, I, gotta go for a, I gotta go for a pack of cigarettes, kid. I'm not coming back. Like, Greg, and, and so the other ones are like, you know, like, like we're still your friends. We don't. We just don't want to play hands. I'm like, I'm not your friend though. <laughs> like, I didn't. I didn't try to hide that shit. I was like. We're still your friends. I'm not. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'm not your friend. Up, Fuck I just, you. I asked everybody, like, so how long have you known this dude? Like, why Why do you get? Why did you guys hang out with him? Why was he invited to the game in the first place? And the thing is, everybody had met him at about the same time that I met him as we were starting the game. So he was The only person total... who really that well was Bob <laughs> of and course. John. We had known him since high school. And remember how I said at the beginning of the podcast, Bob makes friends with horrible people because he thinks it's funny? That That's exactly what happened. He invited him to this game knowing that this sort of shit would probably happen because he thought it would be funny, and it was. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing. He told me, like, I was like, why the fuck do you hang out with him? And he said, quote, when I feel like hanging out with an awful person, I call up Kenny. <laughs> you know, Bob kind of sounds like a sociopath. Yeah, a little bit. Dude, Bob is awesome. <laughs> oh. 
Like, there is never a dull moment hanging out with him. It, it's impossible. <laughs> he, there's always just something completely batshit going on. The thing that was going through my mind when he was ranting for like 20 minutes about how rats can't be on fire if they don't have fur was just, was just, man, I really wish that Dragon Dildo Girl had broken up my game because I wouldn't have to be dealing with this shit. <laughs> but the concept that a, that a fully grown dude would be arguing for like 20 minutes about whether or not rats were on fire, it wasn't even of consequence. It's not like the rats being or not being on fire affected anything. Yeah, it all it was was just a little flavor fluff just, for you to run in your fucking Blade Runner street race. Yeah. It's like Rules if, lawyering it's like in if, those games is the worst, if, man. And you were like, all right, so the tables are bright mahogany. He's like, no, fuck you. You already told us that the climate here was temperate. Mahog- they wouldn't be able to get mahogany. <laughs> that kind of shit has happened so many times. Like, you, DJ, you, you remember when we were playing... Uh, D and D for the first time, with uh, oh. with our kind of mutual friend as the DM, yeah. and so I had this character right that was uh, I was like a necromancer. He was a good guy necromancer, and I had a, a, skele- a skeleton best friend that I named <laughs> the, I, I named Mr. Bones right, and he couldn't talk, so I, I took points in ventriloquy so I could I could talk through him and I would have <laughs> conversations. <laughs> like, yeah, don't you think so, Mr. Bones? And then I'd throw my voice, and, like, I'd have to roll to complete that to make sure it worked every time. So click it was clack, get in the sack. Exactly. It was, would say. It was, it was hilarious, right? So in our first encounter, we were playing 3.5, and 3.5 sucks dick. And so... It does. Oh, sorry, this <laughs> hey, anybody so, listening, you like 3.5, you're a moron. <laughs> <laughs> Taking this podcast down with no survivors. But anyway, so like we're, we're we're doing combat, right? And I've got this move. Uh, it's like uh, I think it was spectral hand, right? Mage hand. Yeah. And so the the the, the stuff that the, it does is sort of inconsequential. I wasn't actually using the the ability. There were these uh, there's these little electric rat things that we were fighting, and uh, I had a crossbow. Pikachu. Totally not Pikachu. Do not steal. Yeah, not That's... Pikachu. Please, original character. So there are these little electric things, and they're really hard to hit. And, like, for some reason, I rolled, like, a nat 20, and I got to instantly kill one of them He's with my crossbow it. from range, right? So I was like, oh, shit, cool, I want to talk about how, you know, what I'm going to do. So I was like, I'm not using this to get any bonuses. It's just flavor text. I want to have the spectral hand reach out, grab the thing, hold it in place, and I shoot it with the crossbow. It's like, that's pretty cool, right? Yeah. And the mm-hmm. DM is, no, you can't do that. Spectral Hand can't do you. You already used it. You, you, you'd you have to cast it. And I was like, no, it's just it's just flavor text. Like, I'm not actually using it. It's just, I, I just wanted, that's how I want to describe doing it. No, you can't. It's against the rules. And then we never played D&D with him again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we failed pretty fucking quick. What's the rationalization for, like, limiting flavor text here? Like, I'm, I'm not getting that part It's because the people who are, are most drawn to D&D are the worst kind of people to play D&D with. True. <laughs> you have to convince it's people who think, oh, D&D, I don't want to play that. Those are the kind of people who you want to convince to play it, because you have to be creative and have social skills to play D&D. Like, when we played D&D, I wasn't... I was kind of into it. I, like, I listened to podcasts for a bit, and then I got more warmed up to it. But I played fucking Guy Humano. Like, I had exactly. fun. Totally Taking D&D not- seriously is like saying, I'm going to critique a comic for not educating me enough. Yeah, like... So, That's not what you go there for. The thing is, is that surprisingly enough, the group that I was playing with, Sans Kenny, now that Kenny is gone, is actually pretty fucking great. Like, a Kenny free environment. A Kenny free environment leads to good games. This D and D game, Kenny free for twenty days. <laughs> right. <laughs> the thing is, is that apparently, though, these like some of the other players continued to play in other games with him. Right. Oh shit. And this uh, this went as badly as it sounds. Multiple times, I'm like, why the fuck are you guys still playing with this dude? Like, shit, like in some, like, zombie game that they were playing, like, it was a zombie tabletop game. And 
His character had, like, all the shotgun shells, but he didn't have the shotgun. Oh, Jesus. And he wouldn't give the dude who had the shotgun the shotgun, the shotgun shells. They're being surrounded by zombies. Give me the fucking shotgun shells. No, I want to shoot the shotgun. You don't have the skills to shoot the shotgun. I am I am an ex-police officer. I should be the one shooting the shotgun. No! No, I want to shoot the shotgun! <laughs> and then they die. <laughs> because, because they had to fucking shoot his character to get the goddamn shotgun shells. <laughs> But it's what my character would do. By zombies, he's still like, no, my character wouldn't want to not shoot a shotgun. (laughs) I would rather (laughs) die than not shoot a shotgun. This fucker. Yeah, names were changed to protect the innocent. Kenny is not. (laughs) What's his last name? We're going to dox him. Oh, shit. I I would rather not actually... (laughs) Don't, Primarily don't. because then you would have to deal with Kenny, and I don't want to have you have that shit on my head. Kenny walks into the police station after getting docs, punches cops in the face. It's just what my character would do. Basically. <laughs> basically. He was also that that sheltered white kid who said the N-word all the time. See, that's was not that allowed. Kid. You have to earn that. You have a card that allows you to say it. I do. I, I do. Is, I have a card as well. Oh, so do I. I. I don't have a card. This sucks. I don't know any black people. When, I live when in you Midwest. know real black people and you become one, one with the black people, you gain their trust. Once and I then they'll make gray. you. Once they'll they make you a card, like my like my homestuck aliens. Like oh. really, the card is just something you show to other white people that lets you know you can say. No, 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 it. no, it's, no, it's no, it's no. Something the card you feel, something you emanate. No, the is card the is you show that to black people when they're about to kick your ass. <laughs> well, well, that too. But if that black person is about to kick your ass, you're obviously not emanating your real nigga aura, so you're doing something wrong there. <laughs> this is true. This is running about an hour long, so we'll go ahead and close it out now. Yeah. So, closing closing thoughts, Dragon Dildos, fuck Kenny. When I feel like hanging out with an awful person, I call up Kenny. <laughs>